Oh no, the door is closed and I have these heavy bags. How will I ever get inside? Boy, if only somebody 27 years ago had had the foresight to say, this is a public educational setting, so you should make it as accessible as possible. Oh wait, they did. We'll see you inside. All right, so as you may have figured out from our little video intro there, today we're gonna to talk about accessibility. All right, now this is a huge concept, so we're gonna just take a tiny sliver of it today and try and answer two questions for you. Why and how? Why do you have to do it and how can you get started on it? All right, the first question, why do you have to do it? Well, I've got an answer for you and you're gonna hate it because you have to, okay? Now, whether I'm talking to you about how to teach your course or I'm talking to my daughter about eating her vegetables, nobody likes that answer. And I get it, but the fact is it's still true, okay? Whether we're talking about ADA compliance, Section 504 and 508, we're talking about funding, we're talking about accreditation, accessibility is now mandated. It's not optional anymore, okay? So that's the stick. I'd much rather talk about the carrot, all right? And that is when you increase the accessibility in your course, you benefit all your students, okay? In the same way that that ramp and that auto opening door out there benefits you, and me, as well as the person in a wheelchair, if you increase the accessibility of your course, you benefit all your students, not just those with visible or diagnosed disabilities, all right? So if you go through your course and you uh, add, alt or add descriptive tags to pictures, you follow basic style guidelines, you use headings, you add captions to your videos, you're increasing the ability of every person in your class to get that key information you want them to get, not just those with disabilities, all right? So, let's talk about step one. How do you get started? And we're gonna start with a very easy one today. We're gonna to talk about captioning. And the reason we're gonna talk about this is very simple. People already use it. People know about it, they're familiar with it. This is the one that your students are gonna use by far the most, okay? And the reason for that is pretty simple. If you spent any time on the internet, you've tried to watch a video that you couldn't follow along with. Maybe it was poor quality, maybe it was somebody speaking with a thick accent, maybe it was someone talking too fast, <clears throat> okay? Not that we know anyone who does that, but the fact is at some point in time, you've probably hit that captioning button so that you could read and follow along with your speaker. You're gonna give your students the exact same opportunity to do that on the videos that you give them. Okay, so that's the why. Let's talk about the how, okay? And I promised you a surprise ending and here it is. We're gonna do it for you, okay? Can't get easier than that. If you send us your videos, whether you send us the links, you send us the videos yourselves, send it to us, we will send it to be captured, we will pay for them to be captioned, and in 24 to 48 hours in most cases, we will send back to you a fully captioned video that you can then pass on to your students. So I don't know how much more simpler we can make it to start down this path of accessibility together, okay? Hopefully I will come back Monday. I will, I will have an inbox full of requests for video captioning. That would be awesome. Don't forget in a couple of hours here at the downtown campus, we've got the What's New in Canvas training. We've got it next week at the other campuses. So hopefully we'll see you at one of those. If not, hope you have a great weekend.